Okay, I just got home from work. I wasn't planning on this, uh, wasn't planning on this part coming in yet, but it is here. So I got my new elbow and I have a new thermostat housing. Let's start getting this thing prepped up and try to get it on there. <clears throat> if it cures overnight, great, then I can start putting coolant in tomorrow. But it's supposed to rain, so we gotta hurry. Luckily, I planned on making a mistake or two doing this. So, let's get started here. I'm racing a memory card because I'm running out quick, so I'm just gonna do this. I know I shouldn't be doing this, but I don't plan on removing the elbow ever. Scared to keep turning it because I need it to set a certain way, but I sure would like to get enough threads in there. I need it to sit basically like this. We'll take the sensor, put it in there. Now, where is my thermostat? Race against time here. So I'm putting more than I probably should on this gasket material. in here quick update because I haven't really been filming how much I've been messing with this here but I reinstalled the new thermostat housing ended up doing it off camera because my other memory card filled up and there was no way I could stop but I got it on there and to test fit it, like I guess almost dry running, I filled it up with some water and I don't want to run water, but I wanted to test. And I don't want to waste any coolant and I don't, I don't know if I have any leaks. I saw some drips of coolant coming out and I think it was from the radiator hose, but I haven't seen anything else since. And unfortunately a stupid water hose, uh, Jax decided to attack it and it has a hole in it. So it was spraying water up all, all in here. So I splashed up and I'm trying to let it sit to dry, but I think I'm ready to put the battery in and try to start it up for the first time. Put the uh, battery in. She did. We'll do it later. About par for the course. Okay, I had to break this video up so many times I don't know where I left off, but last was the battery was dead. Technically, I should be okay. We held water. Let's try and fire her up. Up now, make sure there's no leaks, let it build pressure. Oil pressure is reading good. Let's try the AC compressor. I 
I don't know if I have a fire extinguisher. I don't want to push that. So where's the smoke coming from? It just smells like new, new everything kind of burning off, but I don't want to fire just in case the fuel line's not hooked up right. Fuel lines seem to be good. Just in case, Zane, just in case. That would be the first time I've drove the truck since December. This is definitely... So, this is the old fitting, and I'm betting, I'm betting the old fitting is this is bad. We can figure that out. We just have the tire steering fluid. Yep, the tire steering fluid is making pretty bad. Oh, we'll let it run for a little bit and report back anything that may be bad. So here's something interesting. Before, when it, it, from the day one that I bought the truck, it would never, uh, the temp, let's see if you can see it, the temperature would never get above the first line. It wouldn't even get to this, uh, in the range. It was literally like right as you read it, you know, just barely hit in there. But if I sat parked, when I first bought the truck, it would not get above the notch to even start the arc, if that makes sense. It would never get above that. If I sat in traffic for five minutes, the temperature would shoot up. Where it's at right now is right in the middle of normal. But if I was just sitting there, and it happened a couple times, the truck would run hot and it would shoot up. I, I pegged it once, and I think I pegged it when I first bought it. But uh, it would always overheat if it sat. But you know, as long as it's been sitting here, it would have overheat, overheated by now. Point, point being, climbed up right away to sit right between the O and the R. Uh, I used a uh, Motorcraft, I think it's 192 degree thermostat, which was, I think was factory. So maybe that had a difference, but I could have swore the old one, I have to go dig it out. It was also 192. So maybe it was a bad thermostat, I don't know. But I'm trying to let it idle to see if the temperature would spike on me, but it's uh it's sitting pretty I still, the only leak i have that i can see is my power steering pump i think i got my truck back wow filthy and get her back next to big sister over here not getting any smoke anymore and it always kind of it always smoked from the day i bought it this is this is very very scary for me because that's a lot of work I did and I was waiting for something to uh, mess up. I let it idle earlier for a while and nothing really happened and I had to mow because it's going to rain down here tomorrow. I'm going to keep watching it and see what happens. Power steering is worse than it was before.
Okay, picking up where I left off yesterday. The power steering line is leaking, and it's leaking bad. It's bleeding out. Um, something I should have changed out. I knew it was leaking. It wasn't to the extent that it is now, but I need to change it out before I can fully get this thing road tested. That, on top of the weather, really is going to stop me today from trying to get its first real drive in. But uh, it looks like just a $20 part, maybe. So it shouldn't be too bad to replace that. I'll, I'll cross that bridge when it comes up, when the weather's a little bit nicer. Other than that, the truck seems to run just fine now. I got it up to operating temperature. I drove around the yard a little bit, and I don't see any leaks besides the power steering. The coolant seems to be okay. It didn't overheat. There's no more white smoke coming out of the exhaust. For right now, I'm going to call this a win, and I'm super surprised because I didn't think that I'd be able to do it. It took a while, but that's also because I filmed it and tried to post it on YouTube. I think that if you just get to try to do this job yourself on this old truck, you probably could have done it if you had the parts ready within a couple weeks a couple, or maybe just a weekend. It really added some time getting in there and then editing these videos down. So this job has taken about three months so far. But as it stands now, I drove around. It's acting perfect aside from the power steering. And I got a park next to the Lightning over there. So just need to put the front bumper back on, the skid plate, change that hose out in one sensor that's just cracked under the hood and I believe that truck's ready to go can't believe it it's it seems like it's done so while I'm out here I'd like to also say that funny thing is about that power steering pump and that line that I need to replace today a, a guy that I watched named Steve Stoltz and Steve I'm sorry if I said your last name wrong he does he has a variety of stuff on his channel but he has a lot of good stuff on the OBS Fords and he just today posted a video on replacing that line so it doesn't look like it's too hard and it looks like it's going to be a good fix to stop this thing from from bleeding out on me if you get a chance i'm gonna put his name in the description with the other guys i always shout out he's got some really cool stuff on there and he's helped me out a lot he's actually one of the reasons why i got the lightning working again because he did an ecm video about the computer and the capacitor so very knowledgeable guy and a good channel if you would give him a look because he's, he's worth watching it's really helped me out and i enjoy a lot of the stuff he puts out the other three channels I, I always love to shout out are uh, three real supportive guys. I uh, love the channels. I uh, talk to them in the comment section of their videos and mine. It's Cody over at Why Duck Productions. Right now he's restoring a 99 Suburban. That's been some, uh, some dirty work he's doing, but it's coming out nice so far. He's also got a lot of tool restoration videos out there that are fun to watch. It's just an overall good channel. Give him a look if you got a chance. Zane at Hodgepodge Dodge Garage. I think right now his primary video is over the, the 46 Willys Jeep that he's restoring, but he's got a lot of projects. He's also teaching some fire safety if you want to check him out. <laughs> Great channel. He's he's getting real big right now. And then, then there's Jason at Sparks Fire and Balen Wire, who's currently restoring a, I think it's Alice Chalmers WD-45 tractor. I may have said that completely wrong, but he's restoring his tractor right now, and he's also got some great content. He's getting bigger and bigger. All these guys are getting bigger and bigger, and they've got some really entertaining stuff. If you like my channel, I really think you'll like theirs too. All that being said, I noticed today while I was trying to get a video ready to edit that my subscriber count was up to 122. That blows my mind. I never would have got there without those three guys shouting out my channel and everybody else who just happened to come across these 92 through 96 OBS Fords that maybe enjoyed my content. I appreciate all y'all for watching, all y'all for subscribing. That really is just it's mind blowing to me. I never in my life thought I'd have that many people. So thank y'all to everybody. If you comment, I try to reply to each and every one of y'all. There's been some great people down there that give me tips or support and thank all y'all. So if you stuck with me to the end on this one, I do appreciate it. Hopefully we'll be having some more road time coming up when the weather gets a little bit better and we can actually get out and test drive this truck. As always, guys, I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.